I don't think we need to have serial violent criminals anymore. And what I mean is there's really no reason for someone to be allowed to continue raping and killing people. We should be able to identify them much more quickly than has happened in the past. Investigative genetic genealogy wasn't something that most people were even interested in or aware of. And so we were able to build this really powerful tool for human identification under the radar. All day long, I'm building family trees backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and looking for that very small number of people who are related to all of the people and the ancestors that they need to be in order to be the contributor of the DNA that I'm trying to identify. Something about it just fascinated me. It wasn't until 2009 that 23andMe introduced autosomal DNA testing to the public, and we were able to use that for genealogical purposes. And I jumped in with both feet. I kind of dropped everything else I was doing and started working on genetic genealogy full time. People started coming to me and asking if I thought that genetic genealogy could be used to help them find their very recent unknown ancestors, i.e. adoptees. You know, if someone was adopted or if they took a consumer DNA test and made the unexpected surprise that their father wasn't their biological father, could we use this technique to try to identify those unknown parents or grandparents in some cases? And I thought that was a really intriguing question. So I started trying to kind of tweak the techniques I was using, and I ended up developing these techniques that have been very, very successful in unknown parentage research and have ended up helping hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of people now reunite with previously unknown biological relatives. Parabon Nanolabs of Reston, Virginia has developed sophisticated software capable of unlocking information contained in DNA left at a crime scene. Because of Parabon Snapshot, investigators will have their first clue of what a suspect looks like. They were using DNA from crime scenes and unidentified remains putting it through this very advanced analysis process called SNP genotyping and predicting people's traits, their hair color, eye color, skin color, shape face, etc. I finally decided that I would use these techniques that I developed for a known parentage to try to help law enforcement. I joined forces with Parabon Nanolabs to create this genetic genealogy unit to offer these services to law enforcement. My very first case was the double homicide case, Jay Cook and Tanya Van Kylenberg, who were a young couple from British Columbia who had come down into Washington State to run some errands and were murdered, and Tanya was also raped. Tanya's body was discovered first. That was about six, I think it was at least six days, maybe seven days after. And it was about another two days until Jay's body was found. It was definitely frustrating to have that as such an open question, you know, how something so horrific could happen and you know there was not any particularly strong leads over time oh you know obviously when it took over 30 years as it did it was uh, just very hard to come to terms with he was actually very straightforward to identify it only took me about two hours to find him in the family tree which is very unusual He was a daytime short haul trucker, I guess. And uh, he stopped at a, a stoplight in an industrial area of Seattle there, opened the door at the stoplight to adjust something on his truck, apparently. And in the process of doing that, this paper coffee cup falls out of the truck. The police who were surveilling behind him doing surveillance saw the coffee cup fall out.
by getting the coffee cup, they were able to get what's referred to as confirmation DNA so that that DNA match is then strong enough from the coffee cup to be able to confirm back to the crime scene DNA. So that's a strong enough match to then justify an arrest warrant. Yesterday, we took into custody a 55-year-old SeaTac man who is suspected of the 1987 murders of Jay Cook and Tanya Van Kylenberg. It just felt surreal. I remember Jim Scharf phoned me at about, it was about six o'clock in the evening, and he said, you know, John, we got him. He's been arrested after 30 plus years. It was just surreal to think that it finally come to fruition and finally been able to hold someone accountable for these crimes. His was the first case to go to jury trial where the suspect was identified through genetic genealogy, and he was convicted by that jury and received two life sentences. A big break in a decades-old cold case. DNA techniques helped solve an infamous 30-year-old cold case. Since I joined forces with Parabon Nano Labs, May 1st, 2018, we have had 150 successful identifications on law enforcement cases. That is one per week on average for the last three years. And if you add all of the years those cases were cold, it's about 3,500 years of cold cases that we have helped to resolve during this time. I don't think we need to have serial violent criminals anymore. And any violent crimes where there's DNA left behind really don't need to go cold. You know, we don't need to have these cases anymore that are decades old. As long as there's DNA left behind, and there typically is in a violent personal crime like these, then we should be able to identify that person much more quickly than we've seen in the past, stop them in their tracks, and save people from ever having to be victimized by these criminals in the first place.